Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Live Build Challenge. We're very excited to have you here today. Hi, Sam. How are you today? I'm doing great, Will. How are you? Doing awesome. Very excited to see this Live Build Challenge. We're going to have a lot of contestants, a lot of challenges, and we'll be here to host it remotely to really review the tape after the challenges. That's going to be very excited. Very exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of competition. I think it's going to be a, a great event. Yeah, yeah. So Sam, can you tell us a bit about where you're, you know, what you do in Appian, where people might have might have seen you before? Yeah, I'm a product evangelist here at Appian. I've been here for about a year and a half, and you've probably seen me on a couple of live streams. We do some learn with experts, but I'm all just here to teach you about the product uh, and make it exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. And I've been, um, you know, an instructor. So maybe some some of you might have seen me as a, you know, teach you at some time, and um, might also have seen me on YouTube. So. We're going to be uh, seeing April introduce, and we're going to see April introduce the concepts of this live bell challenge. Let's do it. Yeah. And you're ready for the grand finale, the big party at the end? Yes. All right. Well, live bell challenge now comes with a bar, so that's pretty exciting. Today, we are bringing you a new format. We have 16 developers. And we're going to have them come up in four five-minute quick build rounds. I know this is a networking event. You guys want the chance to network. So we'll take five minutes. You'll take five minutes. And we'll go back and forth like that. Kind of Appian Hackathon meets pub trivia. All right. So the winner of each round is then going to face off in a 15-minute finale, after which we will share with you what they've built so you can get a chance to see what everyone has done on stage. For our online audience, hello. Uh, we have virtual host with our watch party who in our live breaks will be teaching you about how you can solve the problems and telling you more about the Appian features involved. So something for everyone. Now, before we get started, there's one more thing I need, a wonderful co-host to help me take you through the action. So without further ado, please, Nathan Talbot, join me on the stage. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I'm All delighted right. to be here. I'm very excited for you to be here because I think people may not understand my American accent, so I need you to translate. I did figure that I was purely here as the uh, British token yeah. to translate things for you, so I'm definitely happy to do that. Yeah, I, w I did want someone with Appian experience, with some charm and wit. There's no one else available, so we have... I'm just kidding. Nathan's great. Nathan, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Nathan Talbot. I'm one of the uh, solution consultants in the UK team, and I, I love this type of event because this is where I get to be on the other side of demonstrating the cool features of Appian. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the teams are going to do today. Yeah, you know exactly what it's like, hands-on keyboard in front of a yeah. crowd. Pretty intimidating. All right. Um, I mean, let's get started. Let's head on over to our desk. I've got to ask, though. Can I press this button? Oh, the buttons. Wait, yeah. where are the fireworks? All right, maybe there's no fireworks, but these buzzers are a way for the contestants to signal when they've finished. There's bonus points for whoever is the first one to complete the task, but there's other things they're graded on, so it might not necessarily mean they've won, but a fun little thing to add. So you didn't think that five minutes was enough pressure, and you want to add more pressure from the teams. Um, Great. I like to torture people. No, no, it's all in good fun. Okay, let's see who our first victim, I mean, contestants are yes, going to be. Yes, exactly. Nathan gets it already. <laughs> all right. So, uh, oh, let me back, back up a little bit. Um, so, all right, for our first round, we have four wonderful uh, contestants that we're going to bring up. Um, all right. So, here are the four contestants for the round. I'm going to bring them up one by one. First up at the red desk, Gokul Sankar, lead consultant at Yexel. Gokul is our most experienced developer up here today. He's been doing Appian since 7.5. Wow. I don't know how many people out there have been around since then. Nathan? Yeah, absolutely. Coming up next, we have got at the Green Desk Technology Specialist at Coforge, Maria Sokova. Now, Mario lives in the UK, but moved over here from Mexico. Uh, he may be the luckiest man alive because he's managed to survive an explosion and a parachute malfunction. 
And if he looks familiar, he competed in last year's Appian Europe Live Build Challenge. So he's come back for another crack at victory. Yeah, he gets the pressure. And so does our next contestant, Richard, Richard Michaelis from Accenture. Richard also competed last year at Appian Europe. And I love this answer. His favorite part about Appian, it just works. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> And last but not least, we have junior consultant at Yexel, Rithani Raja Shri. She's also into racket sports as she loves playing badminton and she also enjoys dancing and texture painting. Wow, what a great group of contestants we have up here. Now, one thing is usually I give uh, the challengers a few days to prep for the Live Build Challenge but uh, only after a lot of begging, I let them know what the options were a couple hours ago. So I'm sure you guys would love to know what it is you're supposed to build. Nathan, why don't you tell them? Yeah, absolutely. So our first challenge is going to be asking participants to create a contact form and update the process to send a confirmation email. So they're gonna be expected to draft out a form for users to input some information, and then they need to update the process model there to send that confirmation with all of the details based off the form inputs. All right, I mean, sounds pretty simple, but let's see who can do it the fastest. Richard, do you have a, what's up? You're good? Okay. Are you guys good? <laughs> well, uh, the let's take, of a, a, live take a, small, a small break. <laughs> this is a live uh, event, let's see. Richard's causing trouble up here. Can you check what's happening? Mike. Yeah, good point. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, it wouldn't be live without uh, a little uh, fun. And it's funny that Richard, who said it just works, uh, was the one causing trouble. Of course. So, all right. I think we're finally ready to go, right? We're ready? All right. Let's get that countdown going. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Let's go. go. Let's build. All right. So, Nathan, while they're getting started, what features are we expecting to see here? Yeah, so we're basically looking for a lot of work to be done within the process modeler today. Um, I'm expecting to see a smart surface come into play. Okay. Uh, obviously, a little bit of um, interface designer work as well to build out that contact form. But obviously, it wouldn't be a live build challenge without some tricky spots in there. So one of the bits that we're seeing if they're going to get tripped up on is whether they pay attention to their role inputs okay. and their process variables. Okay. That sounds good to me. Um, let's head on over and see what people are up to. So if we start on over uh, looking at Gokul, he's getting started in the form. What I like about starting with the interface, not only is it a great visual way to see all the things that we need, but when you set up your rule inputs on an interface and then put it into your process model, it's going to create those process variables. Exactly. For you. And that's one of the tricky parts that we were looking to see if anybody spots that. Because if they start with the interface designer, it's definitely going to make things easier when they get into the process model. Yeah, for sure. Now, moving on over to Mario, I. Oh, moving on over to Mario, I saw that he actually started with a pattern, which I love. Yes. There's a lot of great starting points and we have a lot of great form patterns as a starting point that will give you some of those rule inputs that you need to get going. So going on over, I mean, really at this point, all the contestants are really working on that form. Oh, we've got our first red arrow. Did you spot oh, that? Oh, I did. <laughs> what, what is it we're looking at here? Local, 
adding this. Yeah, so it looks like Richard was configuring a widget there. I can't quite make out the text, but maybe he was just being a bit too quick for the expression yeah. to get caught up. You know what? It's nice that it tells you as you go. Uh, so you kind of know what to look for, it tells you what line to look at, and gives you some good information about those error messages. All right. Going over to Rithni, also working on that form. So it seems like at this point, you know, everyone is really getting that form set up, which is kind of what I was expected going into this. Um, so Nathan, creating an email service, yes, that would usually be pretty tricky, but how easy is it with Appian? I mean, like I said earlier on, one of the things I'm looking for is a smart service because like many things in Appian, there's so many out of the box drag and drop components that it is literally just a case of dropping in the step that we need yeah. and then just configuring it. So I can see already we've got somebody, we've got Richard, I think that was, getting uh, into the process model. Yeah, we see yeah. a process and model Mario's right in here. There as well, amazing. All right, I mean, Mario looks very cool, calm and collected over there. I mean, but he's, 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 he's got the experience now, he's done this before, so you'd like to think that some of our second timers are cool under pressure. I was chatting to Richard earlier and he says, yeah, I'm cool with this one, I'm cool. He's cool, just causing technical difficulties for us up there. All right, I mean, let's jump back out and see what we got going on. You know, I think the pressure is really on for these contestants. It seems like maybe, you know, they're going first, they're up here under the bright lights, and they're, they're trying to make sure they're not making any mistakes because it would really suck to hit the buzzer, but then your email is Absolutely, work. and those buzzers are definitely gonna add pressure. I know we've not got the sound effect, but just knowing that somebody is smacked that button is definitely going to play on the rest yeah, of the contestants' minds. Yeah, I really hope people make their own sound effects. I think that would be kind of fun. All right, so um, we're in here. It looks like, uh, let's see. Over yeah, so we're Richard. seeing that smart step getting configured now. So Rich yep. is getting in there and starting to configure the uh, email properties. We're not looking for really fancy designs on these yep. emails. We're purely just concerned about making sure that the information on that contact form is getting received by the email recipient. Yeah, and this is super easy. And if you did want to make it more fancy, you can use HTML templates and it makes it so easy to have your emails have the look and feel of whatever it is you're going for. And then it's as easy as configuring, hey, fill in this detail here, this detail here. Yeah, um, absolutely. Super easy with the Sapien process. All right. Going back. Ooh, so we're coming down to about 40 seconds oh my left. Goodness, so 40 we're getting seconds. down to the wire now. And it looks like everybody's kind of getting to the key part around configuring that email step. I think we've seen everybody do some form of interface. Um, I can see Mario's just started to configure some uh, inputs on his process variables as well. Yeah. Do you want me to jump over? Let's see. All right. We're using a nice 10 minute mail service. So it looks like he's checking, making sure that's sent. Oh, goodness. We only have 10 seconds left. We're seeing another process model. Richard's working on it. It's really coming down to the wire. It's and not we're just, down to the last five seconds. Three, not just quicker for them. Two, it's quicker for me, too. One, zero. <laughs> Time's up. Stop building. Up. Oh, my goodness. That was fast, wasn't it? All right. Well, thank you all. Our, our first round of contestants, you all did a great job. Um, we are going to take some time to check out what they've done, make sure it works, and figure out who has won this round. And we'll see you back here uh, in a few minutes. So go top off your drinks, grab some food, and we'll call you back. Thank you, guys. Wow. That was impressive. Very, very fast in five minutes. What do you think, Sam? What do you think of the performance? Very fast in five minutes. That is not an easy task to complete in five minutes. So it's pretty cool to see them go through and take their own techniques to uh, try to complete the challenge. Absolutely. Yeah, Appian is, Appian is fast, but even you know five minutes, that's, that's really s s short. So what we, we want to do here for you know, this kind of timing that you know, the, the judges will be judging uh, the contestants is kind of to, to slow down and really understand, okay, what happened uh, during those five minutes and really kind of go into, okay, well, how could you do this at home, right? So depending on if you've got more or less experience and what we want to really kind of focus on for this specific round is the send email notes. So what we're going to do is Sam will show us a bit about how to configure the email notes. So Sam, can you show us a bit about where, you know, that email note is and how you can configure the basic principles of it? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Will. So as you mentioned, you heard it a lot. Appian has all these smart services that are out to help you build your processes in a really efficient way. So you can see here, 
it's as simple as dragging a send email note out. Now you can see I already have one out, so I'm gonna remove that, but simply dragging and dropping it out allows you to go ahead and start configuring this node based on what you want it to accomplish. So as mentioned, the whole use case of this process was once a form was filled out, we wanna make sure that that email is being sent to the proper person and has the correct details. And this might look very familiar because it's just simple metadata for an email. You have who is going to be sending the email? Who is it going to? What is the subject gonna be? And then you can kind of fill out your message body here. And so it's gonna be as simple as, do you want it to be from the process, the process initiator, so from that user, you can also do a custom sender. Let's say we wanted it to, to be uh, me. We'll just put my name in. We can put my name and email. So you can start to customize and then you can use the two email address uh, with your um, email variable from the from the form you submitted to make sure that it's sent to the proper user. So it's a very familiar and um, common terminology that you'll expect with sending the email. It's almost like sending an email through Google or whatever uh, uh, other email provider you're using. It's you see the similar fields. And so it's pretty easy to uh, start to configure. Um, and it is just very noticeable. Yeah. And you can see here, the body here is, is also dynamic, which you can put any variables in there and in, in, in expression mode, which is very, uh, so how would you, how would you go about setting this up here to make the, the body a bit dynamic and maybe have some dynamic values into the body here? Yeah. So one thing is you can make a pretty generic template where you're just inputting text. So you can see you have like high and it's like, okay, I don't want it to say, high person every time. So you can use this uh, expression editor button here that if you put it in, you can start to uh, access your process variables through our PV. And then you can access and kind of drill into some of those values. So in this case, you can see that we're using um, our name variable. So it's going to say, hi, whoever uh, is being emailed and your message has been sent. Here it is. And you might have some of the body and here's the message that you're sending. So that's a very simple way of doing it. Um, another way that is possible is using uh, templates. So if you have an HTML template that's been already configured uh, based on your liking, you can actually um, import that into your environment and select it here. And so I have this uh, template here. Now you can see um, this one has been pre-created and it looks a little strange. I mean, I'm sure people are like, what's up with all the hashtags? Um, those are actually gonna be variables that Appian will detect. And so when you input that um, into a template, uh, let's actually see if we can just do it here. Um, we'll select our task assignment notification template and we'll scan it. And you can see that it's finding all those hashtags. And now we're able to dynamically update that information as we want. So each time it's ran, it's going to access our variables and dynamically update our template so that it is um, updated for the information that we want and sends in a nice clean manner. So yeah. it's really, really easy to kind of start to configure things working Very that powerful. you want to use. That's very powerful, and and you know you can really put any your the brand of your application through your HTML templates. Uh, so that's awesome. And I think the beautiful thing about this is if you've worked with setting up infrastructures, like you don't have to set up any SMTP server or anything like that. As uh, Richard was saying, you know it just works, and that's the beautiful thing. Appian comes with uh, the its server to send emails easily, mm -hmm. and. Sam, can you uh, tell us where, if people want to understand a bit more this smart service specifically, where could they go uh, online to get more information, more details about it? Absolutely. The docs are going to be your best friend. Um, so come here to the Appian documentation and just look for the send email smart service. It's going to give you all the information that you might need from configuration um, to some exceptions, how to handle some of the inputs. Um, it's going to give you all the information you need. And so you might hear this throughout the, str uh, the stream today. In the event, but Appian documentation is going to be your best friend. It's a really great resource to have when it comes to learning about new capabilities. Yeah. And so you can see like setup, it's just going to be a great resource and you can have emails. You can also see it can lead you to other resources as well that you might want to use within your processes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and something that I've, you know, repeated to my students when I was teaching is the documentation is not used enough by developers. And, you know, sometimes you just try to figure out something by just, you know, hitting it on the wall, but it doesn't really work. And, you know, usually sometimes the, the answer is just directly in the documentation. And, and honestly, you know, amongst a lot of different platforms out there, Appian's documentation is really thorough. It's really mm -hmm. well uh, defined. It's also versioned. And so really would be, uh, you know, it's a shame to not use uh, the documentation. And as Sam is showing here, you can even go back if you've got a, you know, as, as we we're talking about, you know, having people having worked on previous versions, you can go back into versions and it's all version, which is, which is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like, as you mentioned earlier, the docs are just such a great 
learning resource as well. Like it, whether you're wanting to use a smart service within your applications and your processes, or you're just wanting to learn more about Appian and how certain features work. Like you said, it's very organized. It's very thorough. So it's a great resource for learning and uh, maybe learn about new features and going through and um, maybe learn about stuff you've never seen before. So you can start to um, add more tools to your Appian toolbox. So I always recommend that Appian documentation to different users. Absolutely. And as we're waiting for the second round, and I hope everyone is excited uh, to, to, to go for this round, one thing that I do want to, to mention in terms of, uh, you know, we had a process model here that was, that was uh, built. Uh, something that is really important is to test out your process models and something that really Appian makes it easy, uh, you know, is to just test out, debug your process models that you don't have to compile anything. You can just basically start the process for debugging and it just works directly, which is awesome because you can really test out your, your feedback loop to develop is very, very fast, uh, which is important when you're developing because you can know, okay, did I do something right? Did I do something wrong? I can know directly. I don't need to wait, you know, hours for something to compile or to deploy something somewhere. It just directly works. Yeah, absolutely. You can, it directly works. You can start to debug it quickly. And then once you start running some processes, you can go into here and maybe see how they're performing. Did you have any errors? Did you have, I don't know if I have any instances. It looks like I do. Um, so you can actually go in and look at it and be like, okay, how did my process perform? Uh, looks like this one successfully performed, but maybe there was an error. So you can go in and start to use some of the debugging features that the process models provide just to make sure that you're uh, delivering the best experience, not running into any issues, um, and that your process is performing as expected. That's absolutely a strength of Appian. And I think it's, it's you know, kind of often overlooked because we kind of take it for granted, but it's really not necessarily there in other frameworks and other works. And yeah. we're going to cut it back to uh, April. Uh, thanks, Sam. I'll see you around. Yeah, thank you. We are going to figure it out more as we go, and you're going to be drinking more as we go. So either way, it's getting better. All right. So uh, if you're joining us just now online, we just had developers go head to head and build a contact form with an email workflow. Our remote team of experts have reviewed their builds and awarded or deducted points for everything from design and function through performance and speed, but no one hit the buzzer. Uh, so our first finalist from round one is one. Gokul. Great job. Amazing. Congratulations, Gokul. Very well deserved. But you cannot be a finalist of just one. So April, shall we have Them to the king of the Netherlands. Wow. Pretty wild. That is amazing. Uh, next at the green desk, hailing from my neck of the woods in the northwest, Donata senior software engineer Jordan Donnelly. It's his first time competing in a live build challenge, but he's not one to be messed with as he's a trained counter terrorism officer and he's a fan of Star Wars. So maybe the force will be with him today? Uh, I guess we'll have to see. Next up at the yellow desk, Kavi Priya Sundaram. Senior Technical Consultant at Verum. Coming over to us from Chennai, India. Her favorite part about Appian, easy building with low code, which gives her more time to do what she loves, cooking. Lovely. And last but certainly not least, we have EXL Appian architect, Sanjay Joshi. Sanjay loves building in Appian and getting user feedback. He's a foodie too, and he loves organizing Friday fun activities in the office. I love to have fun too. All right, welcome contestants. Quick thumbs up. Everything good to go? It seems we're good. Amazing. All right. So, Nathan, please, what are they going to be building? Okay, so in this round, we are asking participants to use a third party data source to populate given bank holiday information. Okay. Our developers are going to be expected to retrieve and modify the data given from an external system. And we're looking to get bank holidays for the future for England and Wales populated into a pre-provided interface. Okay, well, let's get on with it. See how to do APIs and Appian, what's not to love? I love me some APIs. Ready for the countdown, Nathan? Definitely. Are you guys ready? Audience, are you ready? Ready for the countdown? All right, in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, 
One. One. Let's build. build. Let's go. All right. Now, Nathan, what's a bank holiday? See, I'm just a walking dictionary. <laughs> Found some new knowledge here. Uh, bank holidays are basically what in the US are known as public holidays, but as the name suggests, they're kind of a closed day for the banks. Okay. Now, I've, I've heard of some of your holidays, like Boxing Day. That sounds a little bit aggressive. Yeah, it's it's not quite like the sport boxing, but boxes are involved. Okay. Um, it was basically a holiday that originated years ago. Um, presents were given to various people. Um, nowadays, it's just part of Christmas celebrations, and more often than not, it's an excuse to go shopping and okay. in the sales. So Black Friday for anyone uh, coming over from With the US, slightly so. fewer crowds barging through doors. Okay, yeah. fair. All right, let's bring it back to the challenge because it's already been 45 <laughs> seconds. Uh, let's do a quick run through of the contestants and see where they're at. So moving on over to Jesper, it looks like Jesper is getting his start using some local variables and a developer favorite index function. Mm. We have to work with data. We have to get into these big arrays and, and get the things that we need out of this. Yeah, what do you think? Nathan? We've made it slightly difficult, actually, because this particular API doesn't just give them all of the answers. Yeah. Obviously, the UK is made up of a number of countries. Therefore, this um, response from the integration has a number of sub-components within the body that they need to try and figure out which bit they need to use. Exactly. That's the trick. I asked them for England, not Scotland, not Wales. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how other people are doing. Moving on over to Jordan. Jordan is also in here trying to set up that index. And again, working with the data from this inter external system. Appian does a lot of great things. Like when you're setting up a web service back record, it'll give you a great starting point for some of the basics of how integration responses are formatted. But we always have to play along with whatever we are being given. And luckily, Appian gives us the tools to do just that. Let's see what Kavi Priya is up to. What are you seeing here, Nathan? Yep, so it looks like she's trying to work through that response that she's getting. So she's in the expression editor there, trying to page her way through the body response that she's getting. Looks like she's getting a couple of errors there, but as I say, it's all just trying to work out where she needs to be within that payload that's coming back. Exactly. All right, and jumping on over to Sanjay over here. Sanjay looks so cool, calm, and collected up here. Uh, and it, it seems like he is looking at the integration response to see what fields he needs. Now, I noticed something, I don't know if you did. He didn't convert that JSON to Appian value. It makes it so much easier to it read the integration It definitely does. Object. I was going to call that out on one of the screens earlier on. That's one of the things I love about Appian. It's always trying to make things easier for our developers. Exactly. So being able to read that in a format that's more human readable and not just huge, huge masses of text is amazing. Yeah. Let's jump back to the four up, two minutes left, uh, and see how folks are doing. I mean, looking over into some of the screens, you can tell in that output area, people are getting some responses. They're seeing that data come from that external system. And now it's all about getting in the format that we really want it to go to. Absolutely. But we're one minute and 46 seconds away from finishing. And the one thing I'm not seeing yet is an interface to bring back all of this information for a user perspective. Yes. Obviously, total user experience is important in Appium. So we need to start seeing this in a user interface if people want to start getting full points. Exactly. And we do have that interface all nicely built out and beautiful because let's not be too cruel. We're not going to ask them to make such a beautiful, crazy interface in a short amount of time. But Appium does have a lot of patterns that help you get started and a lot of inspiration over at design.appium.com. Exactly, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Shall we do a quick run through through everyone again? Yeah, let's have another look. All right. Let's so Jesper, it looks like, is starting to get a bit more filter down. I think he's working on some filtering there, maybe. Not quite. OK. He's yeah. getting there, though. And I'm also seeing, uh, and I think we'll probably see it in some other folks. Let's see some test output. Now we're seeing how much easier it is to read that list of map in this way versus that JSON response that's just a bunch of Yeah, text. and you'll notice as well that Jordan's actually got down to actually seeing those bottom level groups of countries there. Yeah. So he's getting close, but we're still seeing Scotland and Northern Ireland in there. Yeah. Not that we don't like them. We're just, of that's course, not no. the use case right now. All right, Kavi Priya's over here. She's getting in there doing her sort info. So this is part of the requirement to make sure the dates are in order and also in the future. Yeah, exactly. If you look at various websites, they're always just going to tell you what's coming next in bank holidays. We yep. don't need to know what's happened. We have got 10 seconds left now. Yeah. 
It looks like Sanjay is also still working here. Let's jump back to the four up for the last few seconds. And giving them two, one, and stop building, guys. Hands off, people. Give them a round of applause. Wow, that was tough, I know. But you all did a fantastic job. We are going to let the scoring team take over, give you guys points for everything you were able to accomplish. And folks out in the audience, now's your time to chat and refill your drinks. We'll see you back in a few. Great, thanks very much, everyone. Impressive again, five minutes, so, so short. And I do wish I was there to be able to refill my drinks as well. What Me too, that does sound nice. Awesome. And so here what we have, uh, we want to talk a bit about so that you can also join in the action is to go to this link, which will be dropped in the chat in a bit uh, to register. And so there is a limit of 500 users on there, but you can actually join the live bill challenge. So that sounds exciting. Yeah, and absolutely. Sam, I mean, well. I know it's fun to watch us build, Will, but I think it's more fun to do it yourself as well. So this will kind of give you that option to uh, build it yourself. And a uh, fun little tidbit, this site is built entirely on Appian Portals. So a quick little plug for Appian Portals and a, a good use case for it. Absolutely. A beautiful thing. And so we're going to be dropping that link in the chat. And just now it has been dropped. So you can go ahead and go ahead and register um, and do be quick because there is a limit of users on there. That's right. Um, so how about we kind of slow things down again, our experts, contestants are really fast, but sometimes it's a bit tough to really follow what's going on. Um, so what we probably want to start when we're, we're working with inter integrations is always to start with what do we have mm -hmm. as a basis, uh, source of truth in a way. So how about we go and look at the API reference, uh, that we're working with? Yeah. And so, um, we are working with a, uh, UK government API uh, documentation site here. And so what this is actually going to give us is we are specifically looking for UK bank holidays. You can kind of see um, data for bank holidays in several different countries. So um, it kind of gives us some of our basic information here. You can see the key one is our endpoint. And so this is going to be kind of where that data is sitting, obviously in JSON. Actually, obviously, because there's no authentication required, we can actually just take a look. This is what that data is going to look like in, a, in its original state. Um, kind of ugly, not very clean to read. Um, doesn't make it very easy on a developer to, to make use of this. And I think that's where Appian integrations can really come into hand of maybe cleaning up some of this data to make it more readable. And that's where our integration object is going to come into play. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's really not pleasant to the human eye, but to the machine eye, this JSON is, you know, really mm -hmm. talks, uh, you know, between machines. So that's, that's pretty awesome. But as you said, um, Sam, so here we have an integration rule and that his, it's this object's job is to get an endpoint and uh, you know call that endpoint here. So as you said, there's no authentication, so we can just basically use the URL directly. That's right. And if we test a request here, we'll see that we're going to get a specific response. So how about we we test a request here? Yeah. So as you said, well, I just simply put in the the URL endpoint that we were given from the API documentation, and you can see we had a success. Um, it kind of gives us some details of the uh, request that was sent. And then here you go into our body, whoops, is the data that we're starting to pull. So you can see England and Wales, and we're going to start to get some of the holiday events for that country, Scotland, Northern Ireland. So it's very, um, it's output in a way that's a little more readable, a little more understandable, um, because over here you can see we did change it to convert JSON to Appian value. So it allows you to read it in a maybe easier to read format, um, something that you see throughout other applications or uh, such as expression rules and stuff like that. So um, it's a very useful tool to have to look at your data and start to take action on it. Absolutely. And that's really what, you know, Appian developers do is they want to push data and show data to humans. And basically that's what it is here is this is structured data. And as we can see, there is a list of events and every event has a title, has a date, has notes, mm -hmm. uh, and has a field bunting. Not exactly sure what that is. But <laughs> I'm not sure either. <laughs> the field is there. And so that, yeah. that data is, is hosted on a UK government server and we're able to access it without authentication here. And then what contestants are basically doing is exposing that so that it's readable and easy to read for humans uh, and potentially even act on on that data. Yeah, exactly. Like you could see in the challenge that just happened, you could see people starting to use the index function to maybe start pulling certain data out. So in this case, they wanted to pull strictly England and Wales events. So um, going through there and starting to pull some information 
Um, that's a great way to just at least pull your information in. And then, as you mentioned, you can start to take action on it. So it's a really easy way to kind of organize some of your data and then move forward. Absolutely. And that, and that's, you know, integrations are really used, especially as Appian, you know, can act sometimes in orchestration layers, because here we have just, we're just getting data, but, you know, we can actually use Appian to also push data and really connect and actually build this whole data fabric, as you can see here. So what, what are those methods here, Sam, that you're showing? Yeah, so we have several different integration methods like get, which is obviously what we perform. So it makes sense. We're going to get information back. We have post, put, patch. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the integration expert. I don't know what some of these fully mean. Um, post, obviously, I think it believe is writing back to a database. So if you have write privileges back, then you are going to be able to post back to that um, maybe database that you're integrating with. And so that's a good way to not only read, but also write back. Um, so it allows you to kind of really start to cement that data fabric of pulling your data from where it exists, um, bringing it in within, let's say you want to use this for a record type, you can have that data stored there, and then you can start to reach across it um, to kind of make sense of all the data that you have within your uh, application or your environment. Absolutely. And and you, you can also, what what would you do if you wanted to actually secure this, 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 this integration? What would you need to create to make sure that there is a key that is encrypted that you can use for this integration rule? Well, there's well, there's obviously there's API keys that you can create with Appian to help with um, if you want to integrate with Appian, but you also have connected systems, which we have here. Um, connected systems are a good way to group your integrations if they're going to be sharing the same base URL. You can see we have this UK gov one where if we wanted to use this one instead, we will just select it. We'll inherit that base URL, which is here, test it again, and you can see we're going to get the same response, except this is a good way to kind of group our integrations with a system with a similar base URL. And then we can start to use our authentication as needed. Absolutely. Integrations are not that scary. So go ahead and practice. That's right. Um, and yeah, it's it's really just about practicing and testing out a couple of things, creating connected systems. They're not that difficult. So just practice with them. That's right. Practice makes perfect as, as always. Uh, we are now two rounds down with two more to go ahead of our final. And once again, our remote team of Appian experts have reviewed the builds of our round two contestants and awarded or deducted uh, points for everything from design and function through to things like performance as well. So our second finalist is Cavi Priya. So well Woo! done. Congratulations. All right. I don't know if anyone uh, can tell what those question marks are, but there's a little Easter egg. If you know, you know. Uh need RPA, AI, process mining. Excellent. And next at the green desk is Jones Prakash Selvaraj. He is the fourth Yexel participant, a senior consultant from Madhuri, India. And I'm not sure if this is a fun fact or more of an embarrassing one for him, but he uh, once set off the smoke alarm in his entire building the first time he was cooking. So hopefully the only thing left burning today is that buzzer when he smashes it, completing his task early. I think that's kind of a fun fact, but hopefully it wasn't at like 2 a.m. Let's hope not. All right, next up we have Lizzie Rubenfield, Senior Product Manager at Investor. Lizzie is from Framingham, Massachusetts, but now lives in London. Fun fact, Lizzie actually used to work at Appian, and now she is working at Investor, still in our Appian community. She loves impressing people with the speed of development. We'll see if she impresses now and uses those skills from doing that New York Times crossword every day. I love the uh, translation of soccer into football there. She, so thank you for that, Lizzie. She did include that when she emailed me uh, content for this slide. And last but not least, we have Guti Lab engineer Remy Kachab. He has quite the challenge ahead as last year's Appian Europe winner was France-based Paul But Remy clearly revels in a challenge having once crossed France by bike. That seems like a lot. Well, oh. welcome contestants. Now we've got a really strong 
Um, so we thought we'd step it up a notch, give it a little bit more of a tricky challenge, a tricky challenge and really test you. So Nathan, what do we have in store? Yeah, in this round, we just need you to shuffle a deck of cards and deal five. Okay, that doesn't sound too <laughs> tricky. It doesn't, but we're looking for functions to shuffle. We're going to need sorting logic. We're going to need variable refreshes. There's some serious complexity expected out of the contestants here in this yeah. round. All right, well, perfect. Appian revels in complexity. Let's count them down. Contestants, you good? All right, here comes the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm always so fast on the countdown. Okay. All right, so I know we said complexity, and there's things that you can use in sale to make this work, but now's my chance to plug the app market. Definitely, yes. So there is a plugin that does this on the app market, and you could just have one easy function, but I have not deployed that plugin to this environment, so they'll just have to do it the old-fashioned way. And the app market's great, not just for handy little functions like this, but our developer community out there come up with some really great ideas and share that with everybody within the app uh, ecosystem. So definitely check out the app in app market if you haven't done already. Yeah, everything from plugins to add functions, utilities to help developers, and full-blown solutions by some of our partners out here. Which, speaking of, we have a lot of great partners who have booths, so make sure you're walking around, checking them out. Some of them are giving away prizes. Um, so yeah, do your rounds. All right, yeah, let's we get have into a look? the competition. All right, moving on over, let's see what Amitesh is doing. So I see him using that RAND function, and that is how I would have done it as well, to do Excellent. a good old so shuffle. Excellent, so he's already scoring points straight off the bat. Let's see, jumping on over. Uh, we have, coming over here, we have Jones. He's, it seems like he's being very diligent in his key presses, which I appreciate. You don't want to make a typo when you're up here on this stage. No, that pressure of getting that red X is not what you want in these situations for exactly. sure. Exactly. And you know, I know you said shuffle a deck, deal five, but I did add the extra Boolean of, do I want the hand or not? So do I want ah. the full deck or do I want a hand of whatever size you're telling me? Yeah, definitely. And Jones, I think is going to come on quite strong here. He's been, um, tasting victory in the past. He yeah. came second on the community quick build challenge. So yeah. maybe he's going for gold today. Yeah, we did have our first community quick build run uh, off our YouTube live streams back in July. So hope to do more of those in the future. All right, coming on over to Lizzie. Lizzie is working hard, putting in that A-Bang paging info start index. I do appreciate that she's putting in all of the parameter names. I must admit, sometimes I do some shortcuts and don't always put them in if I don't have to. Yeah, and those parameters are getting even easier in Appian now, now. When you're in things like the InSpace Designer and you need to set a component uh, variable or component property, just being able to now start to type ahead, is oh. it medium, is it large, and have that auto-complete is a game changer when you're it developing. It is a game changer. I think if we had the product announcement webinar in some sort of live format, that slide would have gotten the biggest applause from our developer audience. All right. Let's move on over to Remy. Now, remember, the French man won the live build challenge at Appian Europe last year. Will he take another one home for France? And but I'm curious to see how experience plays here. As we mentioned earlier, Lizzie and Remy both started on 16.1, so several versions ago now, whereas we've got Jones and Amitesh not starting until 2019 with Appian. So does experience make a difference in these types of rounds? I mean, the thing is, Appian is innovating so quickly that sometimes the less experienced developers can actually do better because they are not stuck in their old ways of doing things and embrace our new features even quicker. I've just spotted Jones is in the interface editor, so it looks like oh. you're starting to pull. Those oh, testing! There's our, uh, into our nice the interface. interface. So we that's made. quite a big step. Oh, did we have a buzz? We had a buzz. We have a buzz. Amazing. So Jones is smart as can think. So everyone it? else can keep going. Keep going. You still but have Jones a minute, 20 stop seconds. And step back. So Jones, amazing work. hands off those keyboards. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty exciting. Our first buzz of the night. We definitely need to uh, make a buzz sound or something. something. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so how else? How are we doing? We got a minute and eight seconds left here, and it looks like. Oh, um, it looks like we have Amitesh a few other folks. Hopped into the express, uh, the interface designer as well. All right, so let's see. So Does the that shuffle, shuffle work? Button. Is it doing you press something? It? Oh, oh. Uh, so it seems like well, we got a button. That's a start. That's a good start. That's the, one of the, the key The button was abilities. there already. Oh well, okay. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so Lizzie's coming on over. I saw her go over to the interface, but now she's back in here. It looks like she's uh, indexing into five cards. Uh, that's an interesting way to index that I've never there, seen. There's uh, a slight look of worry on the face there. It, of, oh, my gosh, they're like judging it, me right now. It seems it doesn't quite work either. Okay, let's, let's jump back in to the four up. We have 20 seconds left. Jones is just chilling, so I really hope he actually hit all the requirements. I guess we'll see when our uh, judges back in the States go over and review his code. But seems like he's doing pretty well. Looks like Remy is over in the interface now. Let's see if his shuffle works. So it yeah, dealt the final some cards. five seconds. Let's see. Oh, uh, two. And one. there we go. Time to Hands stop building, guys. Round of applause for those competitors. Okay, so we're making progress here. We have a buzz. We do. We're we do. It's interfaces. a good start. Let's take it off. So you congratulations. All, you did so great. Thank you so much. You may exit the stage. I'm sure you need a drink now. <laughs> Anywho. We're once again going to take a short break ourselves while the team go through all of the builds and score them. And we'll see you all in about five minutes. Sounds good. Oh, expressions, expressions, expressions. That's the pressure, you know, with the people. I don't know. How, how do you think you would have performed there with those expressions, Sam? That is a great question. I don't know. I mean, with all the lights shining down, the pressure, I don't know if I would have gotten it done in five minutes. I mean, this. I think this is one of the trickier prompts or challenges that we have in this event. And so the fact that Jones was able to finish it before the time is truly impressive. So um, I, I don't know. I don't think I could have done it in the five minutes, but maybe I'll have to put myself to the test later. It is. It is impressive. And kudos to Jones and honestly to those four contestants for, you know, having taken up the challenge. And and we want to make sure that we're, you know, also taking, uh, you know, again, slowing down and because this is going very fast. So we want to provide a few tips and tricks as to mm -hmm. how, uh, you know, you should go about building uh, expressions and and because that can be like a daunting topic. And one thing that needs to be done when before going into expressions and kind of understanding all those functions is to actually use the functions documentation page so how about we take a visit there uh, sam on the functions page here yeah you can see here this is our appian all functions page within our documentation and as i mentioned earlier documentation 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 it's going to be your best friend and so here you have all appian functions stored in a very easy to navigate um drop down kind of format so you can look exactly what you're looking for, whether you're looking for date time functions. If you know what you're looking for, maybe you can go in and just search it. But this is a great way to maybe be like, hmm, I'm stuck on something. What can I use to maybe get me out of my out of my problem here and get a solution? And so I think for this example, we were working with arrays. So we had an array of like 52 cards in a, in a playing deck. So there could be some good functions in here that maybe people could have used in order to manipulate their arrays, um, tweak their, their data and, and use these functions just to help them out in any way, make their code efficient, make it easy to read. And so um, you can see that uh, these these uh, drop downs are just kind of going to, they're going to give you some uh, example functions here that Appian has, uh, maybe what the code should look like uh, within your expression and then what the result will look like as well. And so this is just a really quick glance of like, okay, what am I looking for? Let me look, but say you're like, okay, this one looks interesting. What does this mean? And I can just click right in and Appian is going to even give me more information. As you mentioned earlier, it's very thorough. It's very detailed. So you're going to get everything you need. Several examples, um, compatibility, details, um, the parameters, which we'll discuss later. It's all very um, organized, which makes your life much easier as a developer. Yeah. And, and we were talking about people who had started uh, Appian, you know, at 16 point something. And so here, we this wasn't necessarily the usage considerations wasn't, weren't necessarily there at the time with the documentation. And and when we and when I was teaching students, it was really tough sometimes because, you know, they had this list, but now we have even usage considerations, examples of, of, mm -hmm. of functions on how to use, which is mm -hmm. extremely powerful, which also makes the approach to actually jump into the expression editor uh, a bit easier. So how about we actually uh, go into, you know, an empty expression editor, Sam, and we take a look at what kind of the tips and tricks on how to, how to not go insane when, when you're building expressions. And, and honestly, it's all about slowing down and trusting the platform here. That's right. It's all about just, uh, I think you said it perfectly, slowing down. So for example, let's run this uh, query record by identifier uh, rule here. So this is actually a fairly new rule. I think it came out uh, in the last release, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, and it's a great way. It's very efficient to maybe query a certain record by its uh, identifier field. And so um, you can see um, I already have some initial data here. That's from earlier. We'll just <laughs> hide that for now. But you can see here, I'm within the, uh, the parentheses of my function. And what Appian's going to do is they're going to give me my resources for everything that this yeah. function is looking for as we're starting to fill it out. So you can see we have four parameters here. And for each parameter, it's going to give us kind of the type that it's looking for. So in this case, it's looking for a record type. And then maybe what that uh, some more information that will help you with configuring it. And so we're just going to be like, okay, let's just go down the list. So first thing is record type. It's going to auto populate that parameter for us. And I noticed uh, as someone was building that they were putting the parameter names in. I think this is a great thing to do. I'm not sure what you think, Will, because it makes yeah. your code much more easy to read. Absolutely. So readability is essential, especially that when you're working in Appian, the, the powerful thing about Appian is that you're able to work in, in teams, right? And so if you're not making it very readable, that doesn't, you know, it's not, it's not great. And you really, one of the, one of the things, the mistakes that I was seeing my students do when they were starting out is not using the auto completion as you're, you know, you're doing it here, you're using the auto completion, mm -hmm. using identifiers. And a lot of times students would, you know, write the keyword, um, in entirety and forget one letter and then you had an issue and they yep. didn't know where it was. So really trust the platform. So yep. what are we doing here, and uh, Sam, on, on this one here? Yeah, so I'm just kind of going through and filling out the rest of the field. So in this case, uh, what I'm uh, going to be querying our uh, record type for the movie, which was actually referenced earlier, I believe. Oh, no, that's coming up. This could be a, uh, this could be a little uh, sneak peek of what's coming <laughs> up. But they're related, different concepts, so we're all good. Um, but I'm going to say that I want the identifier uh, relating to this number. And so you can see if I test that, it's going to, uh, I might have put in the wrong identifier. I That's don't know. Right. But it's okay. It's same concept. Um, it's going to spit out the correct identifier for us. We could actually go in here and look if we wanted to. Um, just by clicking on that object there, it's going to spit us out into the data. 10, 50, 115. There you go. Yeah. There one number. Go. <laughs> I was one off. I almost had it. And you can see it's going to give us the data that we're looking for. So this is all the record data. And if I wanted to even be more specific, I could just create a simple array with our fields parameter that is mentioned down here. I'm going to access our record type variable for LBC movie. And let's just say I want the title of the movie. We're just going to put that in there because I don't need all the other data. And it's going to give me just the title. And so I don't have go. to worry about any other data. So it makes things really powerful. easy. And you can start to watch over here on the side. It's very interactive, so you can see in real time kind of what you're outputting. Absolutely, and super readable as well. You know, very easy to read uh, compared to other, you know, some some other languages. It's sometimes mm -hmm. difficult to read. This is, you know, the name implies what it is. Query record type by identifier, very simple. Yep, and I think one very underrated feature is if say you're typing really quick and you're just you're on your game that, that day, and then this doesn't the most readable thing. This magic wand for formatting yeah. is like my best friend when I'm when I'm doing some work it's going to format it into the most easy to read format for you. And so that's always my best friend kind of when I'm going through and I need to clean things up. Uh, I click that magic wand and it handles all the hard work for me, which I just love. Absolutely. And one thing that Nathan did mention during the live stream was uh, the now ability to have uh, suggestions when you're choosing some properties uh, for some specific uh, components. Um, so do we have, do we have an example here where we could, Maybe for card layouts, height, for example, where we can have the suggestions appear as you're typing in um, the keywords. Yeah, yeah. So this will be a really good example to show. In this case, we have a column chart and we want to maybe adjust the height. So maybe it's going in an interface where we need to make sure that our height is um, within a certain level so that we're not moving things around. Now, initially, what I would probably have to do is I would have to go down here. Again, you can see we're in our column chart field function. I would have to go down time consuming, I know, and find our height parameter you can see here. And now we can see the valid values. That was what you used to have to do. You had to be like, okay, here's what my options are. You could either go look or you could have it memorized. I never had it memorized. I wasn't that good. Um, so you would have to be like, okay, these are now my options. Looks like, looks like I have micro, short, medium, and tall with medium being the default. Well, the great new feature that he was talking about earlier is I no longer have to go and search for it. All I have to do is input my text parameter for, with the quotation marks and Appian's going to generate the options that are possible for me. So these are all the options that I mentioned earlier and we can just simply select. So let's say we want it to be short. It's going to input that in. I'm going to put our comma and you can see that it's going to update maybe. 
Sometimes. Oh, yes, I have duplicate. Oh, the height is already provided. There you go. So I guess we can plug that if we want. That was a very good. Uh, <laughs> very good example. That was a very good debugging. De debugging. Look, you can see here a function contains duplicate keywords. Height. Probably down there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm already using it. So you can see down here, we have our oh, height yeah, of medium. There. But if I wanted to change it, it's as simple there as selecting new options. So I love very, those very things. Easy. I love those things. It makes it so easy. It removes headaches. And honestly, when you're learning Appian, it is essential. And I'm very happy that this was uh, put in. And I, and I love those, you know, kind of small attentions to the developer experience, which Absolutely. is so fundamental for, for, for the experience and for developers to advocate for this, for this Absolutely. awesome platform. All right. I think we're going to send it back for the last prompt. So. Three rounds. Now there's only one more to figure out who our full four contestants for the finale will be. It's getting exciting. I'm excited for this final. I'm uh, pretty excited too. And I also realized uh, it was brought to my attention. I forgot to mention what the prizes are. You mean you put this whole thing together and you didn't tell them what they were competing for? There's a lot of moving parts. We're trying <laughs> a new format. I really appreciate all the grace you're giving me. But what are the prizes? Well, not only a trip to Appian World, our 25th anniversary Appian World in Washington, D.C. next April. You can all go and register. I hope to see you there. Not only that, but a 1,000 pound cash prize for the winner. Nice. That's a, a pretty good rate for basically five plus 15 minutes of work. Yeah, it's, it's a good return there, definitely. <laughs> definitely and uh, hopefully they'll be sharing it amongst their colleagues that are all here supporting them today. Uh, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just taking them out. All right, let's get back in to the last and final round. So again, uh, our team has done the review and it was very tight, but this time the buzzer did actually come into play. Jones is our third <laughs> finalist. Yexel is just in here absolutely demolishing. They are crushing it today. So congratulations, it. Jones. That is well-deserved. And uh, yeah, this final is looking pretty good. Pretty good. So shall we see who that final spot in the final is going to? Absolutely. All right. So those are our finalists so far. Round four. First up, we have from AppEasy, the practice head over there, Harshit Bum. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that the online chat is really blowing up for Harshit, so maybe he doesn't even need any introduction at all. But if you don't know him, he was in the first ever Live Build Challenge, runner-up. He's very active on our community, and he can solve a Rubik's Cube in under 100 seconds. I'm expecting that buzzer to get hit pretty quickly then, so no pressure. No Next pressure. to the green desk, we have Jason Salins Arjuan, technology specialist at CoForge. He loves exploring new places and is currently learning French. Interestingly, he sometimes thinks he's on the Truman Show. So if anyone wants to help him find Fiji, catch him after the show. I mean, he is on a very different kind of show right now, but still the same amount of ridiculous, I would say. All right, next up, another familiar face in the Live Build Challenge cinematic universe. We have Jason Moorcroft, practice lead <laughs> Practice lead at Vision Point Systems. Online audience, we have a, a chant going in the back there for him. All right, Jason, he is from Spain, currently lives in the UK. He used to be a Pega developer, but has totally converted and loves Appian for the speed of value creation. He also likes to play piano, 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 and paddle. All right, who's last? Last and but not least. Last but not least, we have Mirana Stefan, senior specialist at Falcon. She joins us from Romania, and before Appian, she played poker professionally. Her fun fact, which sounds painful more than fun, is she once got bit by a monkey as a kid. Ooh. So I'm curious to see if she's got her poker face on today. I mean, I think professional poker might be the best past life you could have to participate in something like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. There's some serious pressure here. All right. Sure. So are you guys ready to find out what you're doing? Tell them. Tell them, Nathan. Okay. We have really stepped it up on this particular round. And we're gonna take a trip to the movies, but today's showing isn't a rom-com, it's not an action, it's not a thriller, it's Data Fabric. Woo, Data Fabric. All right. Yep. 
The developers up here, they they're excited. It. That's the main thing. <laughs> We're looking for our participants to create a chart that shows the average return on investment for different movie genres. Yeah, now we have all of those records set up for them and the data, the relationships. So really, I know we've been seeing a lot of uh, sale code, but I promise you, this is going to be a true low code experience here. So are you all ready? Let's get the countdown going in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Build. Let's go. All right, so data fabric records. Now, what we're asking them to do here, Nathan, there are five different records that are related. Before record relationships and custom record fields, this would mean really complicated SQL views. But we're about to see how in just five minutes, they can traverse multiple records and show you a powerful chart of things of your business interest. There will be people in this room and on this stage that know the previous pain of trying to work with data and how easy it is now with data fabric. And yeah, as you say, we've created those relationships for them already. But what we're looking for here is some custom fields that are gonna calculate and transform the data ready for those reporting components. Yeah, and the amazing thing about those custom record fields is then you can just call them as if they were a regular field over in, in your record. It, it really is amazing how far records have come. And the first live build challenge was when record relationships were released. So to see how much more we can do from them is just so exciting. Let's jump through and see what the contestants are up to. All right, so moving over to Harshit, looks like he's got his ROI set up, you know, taking the earnings minus the budget divided by the budget, figuring out what we're doing there. And now you can see he's going in, creating another custom record field, this time with a template. Now these templates make it super easy to do things like create runtime labels. Like was it a long movie, a short movie, a medium movie? I don't really care about the specifics of the minutes. Yeah, and look at this interface. This oh. is all wizard base oh. effectively. Oh, so you're being guided through. So yes. if you're new to this area of functionality, it's really simple to understand what is Appian asking you to put in or what is Appian trying to get you to understand about your data. Exactly. I mean, working with records, it is a lot of that forward flow, not just here when you're creating web service back records. If you want to generate some record actions, summary views, it is really amazing how much it speeds up everything else you're trying to do when you get those records set up first. I'm looking across the grid down on the bottom here, and it looks like we've got somebody already getting into the interface designer, which huh? I think was Harsh it up on the Oh, Harsh it up there, the getting into the interface. So, Let's see. Let's see, is he gonna go find that chart component? He's yes, finding that he is. chart. Again, Appy and Low Code coming into low play code. here. Drag and drop, throw his trail in there, and then point and configure to that record source. This and is the moment of truth. This really is, and it looks like other folks, uh, we have some other folks, we'll bring back up the, the four up here. It looks like we have some other folks getting into that interface or still working on those custom record fields, but it is, honestly so much faster for something like this to use drag and drop versus having to set up all of those things the configuration for a record back chart it's it's kind of magical it really yeah. is yes so easy let's see we're going in there doing some configurations of filters you know we want to see where the genre is not null and we also want to see I only care about movies that have gotten like over 100,000 votes. I don't really care about things that have, have done less than that. Oh, I just saw some other charts come up here. It looks like Jason is in there pulling it over. He's also over there in the configuration. So you're seeing this is truly our drag and drop low code challenge. Now we have Maroon over here also into the interface, dragging that column chart over. All you have to do select that record type. It'll auto-populate some things for you, but it's so easy to go in there and change. It absolutely is. And that, again, that component configuration is all just a forward flow. Yep. Drop in your record source, filter down as you need to, then configure how you want that chart to look. So yep. super easy. Now, okay, we have a little over a minute left, and I love that we're seeing a lot of interfaces here. I'm seeing those columns. You know, if if we were a little nicer, gave them a little more time, I'm sure they could go in there and do some more branding on those columns, change things up. We have some out-of-the-box color schemes they could pick as well. 
Um, yeah, and we did think about going a little meaner with this and getting them to drill down into that data because true. obviously that's the power of Appy. We can get it into that data and see the underlying um, records. That's um, true. That's probably a bit harsh for today. Yeah, I, I want. We've got a buzzer. We have oh, got a buzzer. Well, well done, we have harsh a buzzer, but so we're not done yet. And I wanted to show seconds. how Jason. Look how many levels he's digging wow. into these related records. How That's easy insane. is that? Versus creating a really complicated SQL view, you just have the power of getting access to everything related and not just things in your database, but wherever your data lives. So, all right, we're getting down to the wire now. Harshit, hit the button. He can't do any more building. I guess we'll see if the judges uh, can see yeah, if he's really I mean, that chart everything. is looking good. There is some information there. It differs. So, yeah, let's see what the judges think of that. See. In a oh. few minutes' time. Oh um, my goodness! What second? Time. That's time. Oh my god! Press that is save. Time. Hands up. Hit save oh and step goodness. away from your keyboard. It's too fast for even us to keep up with this time over here. Wow! Great amazing job, work. contestants! You did amazing. It was visually beautiful. I mean, I love seeing record back charts. Thank you all so much. You may exit the stage, give your final bows, and we're going to take a bit of a longer break here. So, you know, make sure it mix and mingle. Go around to the booths. And we will get you back in about 15 minutes for our finale. Another incredible performance with those custom record fields and those interfaces. What do you think, Sam? That was a good one. I think the custom record fields are an awesome feature within our record type objects just to connect your data. And it makes things so much easier. I don't like, as April said, she said the word SQL uh, and it made my spine tingle a little bit. I did not like hearing that. Uh, I am scared of SQL. And so Appian keeps me out of the databases, which I love. So, um, yeah, I, I, when she said that, I was like, uh Oh, I don't want to get involved in SQL. Absolutely. And I'm sure you're not the only one, uh, yeah. I'm sure, uh, a feeling felt by a lot of developers around the world, Appian mm -hmm. or, or else I would say. Um, so we got a, you know, a longer, uh, time here. So that's going to be awesome. We're going to go over a couple of things. Uh, we're going to go over uh, some feedback that we'd like to get from everyone. Then we'll go explain a bit what happened during this uh, challenge. And then we'll talk a bit about the newest releases, which uh, you know people should not uh, sleep on, as they say. So we're yeah. going to start with um, some feedback here that we want to get. Uh, so there is a developer survey accessible on community. And also we're going to drop a link in the chats in a bit. And this survey, so can you can you tell us a bit, uh, Sam, what do you think this survey is going to be about? What can we win? Taking yeah, it's uh, obviously Appian wants to make sure that its developers are happy. Um, so this survey is going to help give the developers a little bit of a voice when it comes to when they're building with Appian and what their experiences have been. So you're going to be able to go in um, and start this survey and just answer some questions, offer your insights, how you think the product's working, where you would maybe like to see some improvements or some changes. Any feedback is good feedback. And so please go in there and take the survey. Um, it shouldn't take you too long. And there's some great things that can come out of it. You can see there are prizes. You can get a free pass to Appian World, which I went to my first time ever last year, and it was amazing. So I highly recommend going to Appian World. It is a great time to learn about the product, network, network with people around different industries, um, and just have a really fun time. And so um, you can win a free pass there. You can get certification vouchers and more stuff. So it's a really good um, opportunity to have your voice heard when building with Appian, but at the same time, maybe have a, a chance to win a really cool prize at the same time. Absolutely. And yeah, I think it's essential to provide feedback about the platform that you as a developer are spending most of your days in, right? Like it's it's essential to have a word and to provide ideas because Sometimes what happens is that you're in the midst of thing and you're just building stuff and you're not really, you know, thinking, well, maybe this, you know, you get used to how the platform is, but maybe sometimes just providing feedback uh, can, can make a change. We saw it with the example of the attribute suggestion, uh, which, you know, was something that arrived uh, recently, but makes life uh, so much easier. So that's really yeah. important to provide your feedback. Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing that I always say about Appian is it's here to make the developer's life easier while still being able to, to deliver on really powerful and complex applications and for several different use cases. And so with your feedback, like like Will said, you're using it every day. And so to be able to hear your voice and get more opinions, it's just going to make the product better and better as time goes on. And so any feedback is good feedback. Absolutely. So now 
as we said, please take the survey. Um, it's on the, it's in the chat or it's in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, again, very short and you can win. Now we're going to spend some time actually slowing down again on what happened during this challenge. And really there were a couple of components, but one of the components that was really important is custom record fields. And two, before Sam goes in and actually shows how to create a custom record field, this is one of the essential part of data fabric. Now, in the industry, what is really used is that you've got base tables, which you know might be your customer table and your order table. And then if you want to join data together, you're going to be building views. Now that requires writing SQL, which you know is uh, quite the language, it's powerful, but it sometimes can be daunting and not necessarily super flexible when you want to change things very easily and, and quickly in enterprise applications. So the answer to that is to create custom record fields, which allows you without going into the database, without going into SQL, to actually create aggregated data fields on base record types. So Sam is actually gonna show us and talk to us about a, a specific use case and, and show us how to create a custom record field. Over you, yeah, yeah, thanks Will. So as you mentioned, it's a very powerful tool and it's gonna be very, very simple to configure these and then be able to access them across your entire data fabric. So you can see here, um, we're in the context of a record type. And so within the use case of the uh, challenge that our contestants just went through, it's all about movies and genres and gathering data around several movies and their related genres to be able to take actionable insight on this data. And so you can see here that I have my base record type with some basic information that we've seen earlier, like title, year, budget, and earnings. And we wanna take that data to start to maybe learn a little bit more. And so you can see down here, I have three record types, this um, three custom record fields, sorry. And this ROI is um, a custom record field as well as these other two items. And so this is kind of a good designation of what, what are custom record fields and what actually exists in your database. And so a custom record field is as simple as just clicking new custom record field. And then Appian is gonna kind of walk you through this guided wizard of selecting a template, configuring your values and then finalizing everything. So we have a couple use cases here. Um, we have extract partial dates. Obviously it's not uh, an option because we have no date fields within our record, um, but we do have aggregate related record fields. So this is a great way to re reach across related records and start to aggregate that data. We have groups based on a range. And as I click on one of any of these, Appian's gonna give me real life examples. So I have an idea of what I'm gonna be getting into and if this is a good application for me. So you can see based on maybe a certain price point, I wanna apply it to a certain group so that, that can be used later on for analysis. We also have groups based on text values. So having a status and then displaying a status. So if a code is in code review or user testing, it's in progress. So this is just another great way of um, being able to alter or aggregate or change your data in a way that's easily accessible. And then the last thing is Let's say none of these meet your use cases. Let's just go ahead and write our own expression. And we have two options here, sync time and real time. Uh, really briefly, what a sync time evaluation is going to do is when you create a custom record field of this type, every time that your data is synced within your record type object, these fields will evaluate to ensure that they are um, running and returning the data that you might need. And so you can use, you can see it allows you to run supported functions like if and index, use local variables, but at this moment, you cannot use related record fields or relative dates. Now there are real-time evaluations and these um, custom record fields evaluate anytime that field is interacted with, whether you're querying it, it doesn't rely on a sync. Anytime you're calling that field, it'll be um, the real-time evaluation. And so you can use Appian custom fields like match, sum. You cannot use local variables, but you can use related record fields and relative dates. So these two together can really work well in tandem um, when you're connecting custom record fields and data. So I think that's a really good brief introduction. I know I just dumped a lot. So uh, maybe Will, awesome. I thought I'd let you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. Um, and, and to pause on the here on this, just to kind of get folks at home to understand what this would replace uh, in a more traditional kind of application. So the sync time would replace your views, right? Like this is your aggregated data that you, that you, calculates, you know, you, you would be need, needing to create SQL scripts with joins and counts. So this is all done very easily. Uh, and real-time evaluation, this lets you actually extract what you would have potentially done on um, interfaces. So for example, calculations that you would do on the fly as you're displaying a record type, and maybe you've got a dynamic field that is dynamically calculated or 
you know, evaluated. Uh, well, now it's actually part of your record type. And there's a couple of advantages for that. First of all, readability, because that makes it an actual field of the record type. It makes it closer to the source of truth, which is essential mm -hmm. when you're building applications. Uh, and it's also for more reusability, right? So there's readability and reusability, making sure that this field can actually be used by other developers who might need to use this in other interfaces. Because before, it, you know, this calculation would have been maybe put in a down low in an interface uh, and, you know, it would be kind of forgotten by other developers. Well, now it's actually directly there as an actual field of the record type, you just open the record type and you see it directly and you know that you can use it. And even when you're using it in an interface, it actually shows up when you're doing record type, name of the record type dot the fields. And then you see actually the fields, which is just super powerful. And Sam, how about we actually go through, not necessarily create the record, the custom record field itself, but actually go through the steps of the aggregated, uh, aggregate related record fields, which is a very common use case that you can do. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and click our aggregate related record fields here, uh, the, the template, and then we're going to click next so we can start to maybe look. Um, and so it's very simple. You know, you see there's not a lot going on. Um, we have our test field, which we'll, we'll kind of run through once we get our configuration set up. But here's where we're actually going to go ahead and configure. So what fields do we want to start aggregating? So maybe we want to go through our demographic votes and see how many votes did this movie get? So we have a certain movie. We want to look at the related demographic votes and see, okay, let's see the total number of votes that maybe this related record or that this rec this movie got. And so we are just going to do a count of, because we want to count. Uh, well, let's see. I guess we'll test. It's either going to be a count of or sum of, and this is where Appian kind of gives you the ability to test. So let's go ahead and see what we get with count. Looks like 12. And I'm, I'm just going to test here and do sum as well. Um, see what we get. Okay. So this looks maybe a little more accurate here. We're just going to do the sum of the number of votes. Um, but you can see I was able to kind of just play around with what function do I want to run, as I mentioned, sum or count. And then we're able to see with the data that we have existing what those values are. So you can see some movies are ranging from the 50,000s up to um, six figures. So um, it's a really good way of previewing your data, making sure that it's returning the information that you may want before you're actually finalizing it and putting it within your record. Um, as mentioned, there is a way to filter. So let's say I don't want to receive all of the data back. I only want um, to receive data that meets a certain condition. This is where I can start to maybe apply certain um, filters. Like say, let's say I want the, it only to be towards one movie. And so we'll put that movie identifiers in there, that movie's identifier in there and we can retest. Now you can see we're only returning data for that one movie, which has that identifier. So you're able to return really powerful information um, and add filters and add conditions to make sure that you're returning the data that you are going to want um, within your application itself. Absolutely. Very powerful. And, and also something that is another advantage of having this as part of a customer record field is that you don't need to change the structure of your database. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, there's no SQL migration to happen between your development environment, between your test environment, between your production environment, which honestly, sometimes those you know migrations of, oh, I needed to change this view. So I need to change another script and put it you know in, into another uh, environment it's mm -hmm. just a nightmare and, and this basically removes yeah. this and you just need to deploy your record type it goes into the other environment the new environment it syncs or you know potentially you know it's just deployed there and if it's real-time evaluation and it's just available for anyone to use uh, so you know just for developer experience for the speed of it is just a, a brilliant feature here yeah, absolutely. It really is brilliant. And then kind of wrapping up here, we're not going to create, but the ending is just kind of giving it a generic name, whatever you want to title it. Again, you have the chance to test again, um, just to verify, but then that's it. You go ahead and cr click create and those values are going to start to appear down here. And then these are now accessible across your data fabric um, for inputting in charts, creating reporting dashboards, um, or just using it in, uh, for displaying in interfaces. So um, it's very, very powerful and allows you to really reach across and start to connect that data together, which is great. Absolutely. And so, you know, advice is when you're working in teams, I do, you know, make sure that you're actually communicating about this custom record fields. If you're creating custom record fields, you let you let know your, let your other developers know about those custom record fields that they can mm -hmm. actually reuse. Again, this is all about, you know, being able to work collaboratively mm -hmm. and uh, it's not just a kind of one person team game. You actually need to communicate and say, hey, I've mm -hmm. built this ROI custom record field mm -hmm. if that's useful mm -hmm. for your interfaces um, and that's, you know, mm -hmm. really powerful.
Yeah, definitely. So now that you know we've we've seen kind of the we've slowed down on the custom market field. Uh, how about we actually take some time to look at the newly released features? I'm not going to go and and do the webinar over again, but mm-hmm. kind of take a look at the at the release notes. And again, I, I encourage you to actually take a look at those release notes uh, and just you know take a look at one of those one of the features that we might want to want to see. Did, did any of the features that were released kind of uh, you know uh, hit you, Sam? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, as Will said, definitely check this out because these are just going to help your development and provide really great new features. We're doing some really cool stuff with AI with like records chat component. But for me, the biggest thing is this self-service analytics. So this is just another key part of our data fabric of connecting to um, our records that might already exist within our environments and being able to take actionable insight, connecting to different data points within that data fabric, starting to aggregate fields, creating charts, And then using Appian AI Copilot to do all the hard work for you. You're going to allow it to look at your data and then go through and allow you and give it insights and actions back. So you know exactly maybe some next steps that you can do to improve, to optimize your processes. So I think this is going to be a really, really great tool. And I hope it gets high adoption because it's really going to change the way business users um, can look at their applications and their data and take actionable insights. So I'm really excited about this self-service analytics and it's all low code. You don't need to have any developer experience. Absolutely. And, you know, this is one of the features that are coming along with the AI wave. And I think 2024 is going to be crazy in terms of new features with AI, new features for, you know, just to to make the, the platform more powerful. And I think for, you know, one advice for developers is really to make sure that you're following along on community, on the YouTube channel, on the streams, because I'm, I'm getting the sense that in 2024, the platform will change even faster than it is changing now, mm-hmm. especially with new AI features that are just, you know, coming around and just, you know, this is one of the examples of of, of that, which is just uh, very exciting, I got to say. Yeah. Are you excited about this? I'm very excited. I can't wait. I'm excited to see how customers use it. And uh, I think it's going to be very, very powerful. Yeah, AI is just uh, is just impressive. And I'm really happy now with, you know, Appian Copilot, um, which, uh, you know, was released in, I believe, 23.3, where you're able to actually create a form from a PDF, um, which just kind of, you know, lets you know that the work and the 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 day-to-day of a developer is going to change of an app and developer and any mm-hmm. developer actually is mm-hmm. going to probably change um you know mm-hmm. and and i think all those tools will just make the developer more and more powerful and, and faster to build more cool stuff even faster i would say yeah totally agree i think we're, the, all the work that's being done is to allow the developers to build faster and to get work done quicker making it easy on them but like i mentioned earlier still creating very powerful mm-hmm. applications whether it's making really beautiful UIs that are easy to follow and intuitive or creating processes that are efficient and run quickly and give a good user experience. Everything that's being done is to allow people to develop quickly and then allowing front end users to be able to interact easily and really take actionable insight and to be able to learn about their data. So all the, all the new work and I get excited every release, but uh, this release I thought was, uh, was fantastic. And um, all the features are very, very helpful. Absolutely. And a couple of outliers in those release notes, I would say application translations is one of the one of them that kind of, you know, I saw, which was very interesting, something that honestly, having taught, you know, multilingual uh, courses and, and people who are not necessarily English speakers who are working with, you know, uh, applications which are in French and Spanish and Portuguese and all that at the same time. This was always a question I got um, in all my time I was training, which is normal, right? It's how do you translate your applications. Well, now, you know, there used to be solutions, but it was not necessarily out of the box. Mm-hmm. Now it's directly out of the box and it's just, you know, awesome again, making things faster again. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think this is a very, very mm-hmm. powerful new feature. It makes things so much easier. Like you said, it was possible beforehand, but it maybe wasn't the most easiest way to work around in order, in order to deliver. So um, I'm really excited about this one. It's going to make it very simple to translate those objects um, and then make sure that it's powerful amongst different uh, languages. Absolutely. And so we hope this was useful for everybody uh, taking some time to, to slow down. Uh, do make sure that you're filling up the feedback. Uh, go ahead and practice. And thank you, Sam, uh, for the time. Yeah. Uh, and I'll let you close it. Yep. Thank you so much. Well, this was great. It was fun to be here with everyone. So uh, enjoy the rest of the, uh, of the challenges today. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.
not, okay. why not make some trivia for you all to play? So our contestants are gonna have 15 minutes to create an interface that allows you to see some trivia questions, the answer choices, select them, see what's right. When they're done, we're gonna be sharing out a portal so you can actually go and click through them, see if you like their portals, but also see if you know anything about trivia. I think that I'm good because I actually used to host trivia for a number of years, but that's why I hosted, so I could have the answers in front of me. So I've got a prop for you then that oh. I think will be appropriate as oh, a goodness. former host of trivia. Oh, goodness. I thought we had to go all out on the final round here and go with full-on glittery, sparkly jackets. So there you I, go. I'm really wondering why you brought these on a business trip. I mean, who doesn't need an excuse to wear glittery, sparkly jackets? How do we look? <laughs> all right. I think that's enough about us. Let's, let's find out who's going to win, but not only that, who won the last round? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to walk over and Casually. keep the suspense going ever so slightly longer because it was a very close heat on that last round. The scores were so close. But our final four make some noise for Appian Europe 2023 finalists. They are... Go call, Capri, Capri Priya Jones and Jason. Congratulations, guys. So please make your way up onto the stage. Come on up. Uh, in the order on the uh, on the screen, if you would. Thank you very much. You're back up here. Give them a round of applause. Well, well, Welcome back. You've been sitting uh, since the beginning, so I hope that you haven't had too many drinks and you're still ready to go. Jason has hardly had a chance to wipe the sweat from the last round. So, you know, we have a the wide range straight here. back into it, straight back in. All right. So uh, let's see. We know what we're building. We know who the developers are. I think we should just get right into it. Let's get into it. Let's 15 go. more minutes. Yes, quite a long this time. So let's count them down. Here's here it comes. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Let's go. Good. Let's see it. All right. All right. We can just take it easy on this one. We've got 15 minutes to chill. What do we do with all this extra time? <laughs> <laughs> right. So talk us through this one because we've got we've given them 15 minutes. There's obviously got to be a lot more that they need to do, right? Well, not quite. It's really more of a chance to that for them to express some of their creativity. It's all about the interface. I see some of them going in. They're trying to get a feel for what that data format looks like. So we have... Uh, you know, questions, answer choices, correct answer category. So they're going in and getting familiar with that and kind of picking their strategy for how they're going to build out that interface. What do you think you would do? I mean, part of me just wants to page through it all, throw it all up on screen, and then worry about making it look pretty later on. But I don't know, that's me. Well, here's the thing. We're sharing out the portals, and you all will be able to vote for which one you like best. So I do think they want to spend a little bit more time on that. I, I do love the pressure that we're adding of sending this international. Like We have got the online community watching. Hi, guys. Um, that are all going to have access to this. We've got the guys here that are all going to be able to get in and yep. have a go with this. There's some serious pressure. There's a lot of serious UI developers out there that yeah. are going to be scrutinizing these interfaces. Now, you mentioned that international access. How are we doing that so easily for anyone that may have missed uh, the big announcement from the end of last year? So if you missed that, Appian Portals is the way that we're going to get this out there. We're exposing Appian apps on a public interface, in a public domain, on an um, interface that scales for the demand. So this is a great test of making sure that Appian can handle whatever's thrown at it. Yeah, well, I hope you're not eating those words in the center, <laughs> but let's go through and uh, maybe see how some people are going here. So like you were saying, first I would just throw everything out there. It seems like that's the approach Gokul's going for. Let's uh, see, this drink contains caffeine. What's the state capital of Alaska? We're seeing some of those trivia questions. Yes, yeah, so he's got the through. questions in there. That's a good start. But obviously, we're, we're doing this as a multiple choice trivia round, yes. right? So we want to see some answers in there at some point. Absolutely. And OK, so if we jump over, I'm seeing some, let's see, it looks like there we can have some selection. Kaveh Priya is doing a great job at getting those answer choices out, making you select them. So we're going through here. Now, OK, we're doing a trivia app. Yep. But how many of you have ever had to use an app 
where you have to select an option and go next. This is one of the things I love about developer challenges. These skills actually do help them build those enterprise apps, but we just get to have some fun with it over drinks on a Wednesday night. Absolutely. It's definitely going to be fun to see how these all come out. All right. Moving on over to Jason. It looks like Jason is still thinking hard about this. Jason, it's called Final. It should have been open, but it's called Final Round, the interface. Uh, so I'll let you work on that. Uh, <laughs> moving on over to Jones. Again, every time we move to Jones, I feel like he's so relaxed. I need whatever he has to keep him so zen. I think it's just something with the team at Yexel. They are just cool, calm, collected. You know, we've got a final here of two from Yexel. Yeah, big up the Yexel team. Yeah, no, Yexel is a great supporter of all the challenges we do, as well as a ton of folks out in the developer community. These live build challenges, thank you. They only get bigger and better because you all show your support. So thank you so much. Nathan, are you having fun in your first live build challenge? I mean, it's intense. It I is. didn't expect it to have this much energy. It's great. And uh, yeah, I mean, can I come to Appian World? You know, we'll see. This is your triumph. Uh, they've, the they've, they've witnessed a we'll see. I'm taking that down. Yeah, as a, a new, yes. we'll see. All right. Well, like, I wanted to jump over to Jason because I saw that he had a bunch of things out here. So I'm curious what he's doing. What does that look like to you? Maybe the, all the answer choices? Yeah, I, he's got a four each loop in there. So it looks like he's trying to iterate through, which is a good start for trying to get that formatting in the right yep. place. It looks like we've got a bit of a grid layout going on in there, maybe. Yeah. Um, oh, oh there's some wow. answers. Okay, so we've got I some need answers. to see the questions. I do see that second row looks like it's related to uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, though. I don't know if anyone else noticed that. Maybe I am good at trivia. It does look like he's going for that simple click and answer approach yeah. that you were talking about, rather than having to go through multiple clicks to get your answers. Yeah, That's good. absolutely. Oh, look at Jones over here. So Jones is actually working on something that I had listed as a bonus point, which was showing the category as ah, well nice. as the question. So, you so know, it's, getting those bonus points in there nice and early. That's good. But getting the bonus points before getting the MVP, I don't know. You build a lot of demos, like reaching versus getting what you really need. It's hard. It's it is hard. hard. It's always a balancing act of trying to work out what are the audience really looking for. And yeah, potentially this could be the clincher. If they're all in a similar place when we finish, yeah. that might be the way that we get Oh through. my goodness. Look at this. We've been five minutes and look at this form that Goku has already created. Now, is it going to work when you hit the check boxes? Are you going to be able to check to see if your answer was correct? It seems like he may have to work on some of that, but this is definitely a great start. What do you think? It's, it's looking good. And one of the questions that we had earlier on in the kind of prep for this was, what are they actually having to do with this, um, the information that's being selected? Are we having to save that? Or what was the aim here for them? How much complexity have they got to build in here? Look, I'm trying not to be too mean, so we don't have to save it to any sort of leaderboard, but they will. you should, when you answer these questions, be able to see if you're good at trivia or not. Um, all right, let's jump over. I'm seeing on Kavi Priest. Wow, look at, look this, at this progress here. This looks pretty nice as, as well. I do like card uh, as card selection, you know. Yeah, the radio button field I, I need your help here. Okay, <laughs> I'm jet lagged. It's, it's, it's been a long day. All right, um, let's jump around. I love, by the way, Kavi Pri has just gone in to look at that in preview mode. She's come out of the editor. Wait, and hold she's on a second. To see how that's looking. Jones oh, what's is in going the on here? console. <laughs> What are you doing? He's like, no, oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> He's like, oh, they're that. watching me. Quick, close that. I, I don't know about you, but the console has never helped me with Appian development. I don't think you need that for this. Yeah, this is the thing. With Even when you're in um, design mode or expression editor, you've always got that feedback of what's coming in. And particularly if you're using variables, which everybody pretty much is, you can see that information coming in. You can see what it is that you're working with. So yeah, yeah interesting approach using developers. Definitely tools. interesting approach. So coming back over, I just saw some blue lines. So now we're getting some of those visual ah, elements. Ooh. Yes, we're starting to get it looking nice. So that's good. Yeah, I know when I was like thinking about this, how would I build it myself? I was thinking I would love to use a tag component above each question for what that category is. Uh, maybe he'll make those blue bars different colors. Yeah, I'd be interested to see if we've got um, some more sort of layout designs coming in. Because at the minute, everyone's kind of gone for that very horizontal tabular based view, which is fine. It's functional. It works. Yeah. Um, but let's think about what we would be doing in a real trivia quiz. We'd probably be going through kind of forward flow type streams. Exactly. So yeah. Do we want a wizard? Thinking, yeah. I don't know. Well, oh, so this is interesting. 
it looks like Jones is also actually sorting on the category, which wasn't necessarily a requirement, but let's see how this works out for him. Oh, uh, let's see over here. It looks like Jason is making uh, more progress on before it was just those columns, and now we're seeing the question above each of those answer choices. I'm, I'm loving the good practice that Jason's got here in actually formatting whilst he's in an expression editor. Like, Look. it's looking good, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's always going to be a good thing. There's a lot of lines going in there, there and it could come down lines. to waving that magic wand and checking to see how many lines of code have actually been used. You know, maybe we actually should have been magicians instead of trivia host with these vests. Mental note, magic wands, top hats. <laughs> Coming on over, you know, we still have some more configurations happening here. We're just under seven minutes. So it looks like a lot of them have a really great starting point, a really, a really great place uh, to now spend these last six minutes really spicing it up. Yeah, it's hard to believe we're, we're over halfway through now. Like this has flown by, but when you think about how much they've had to do so far, there's a lot going in here. We're giving a lot of data for them to work with. Um, and we've probably done it in a slightly harder way without being pulled through from that inspiration. So definitely a mean one that you've given them. Nathan, if you were building this, uh, if you were up there building this, what do you think your approach would be? Give me your visual of how you want it to look. I, I, I mean, I, I think you'd be just seeing a flood of sweat coming <laughs> off my forehead at this point because this is intense. Um, I, there's definitely some bits in there that I, I probably would have gone with. I probably would have gone with the radio button choices that Cavi Free has gone with. You know, it's quick, it's simple. Um, but I know there's people out there that love the UIS element and would have gone in and made some really cool card layouts and yeah. side by side layouts in there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Everyone has their own flair when it comes they to They really UI. do. And that's like one of the things I love about Appian is you can do everything and you can still spend a lot of time doing the thing that really brings you a lot of joy. So for a lot of people that is interfaces, but for some people, maybe that's process modeling. For me recently, it's been Appy and RPA. I've been playing around with RPA a lot. The, oh, oh, we've got a keyboard wait, malfunction apparently. Can we, can we do a pause? Contestants, can you put your hands up for a second? Can you do a quick pause? Can we pause the clock in the yeah. back maybe? Jason. Jones, uh, Jason, let's just take a pause real soon. Let's just pause? step back. Let's Gordon, make sure everyone's good. So we've got the You're... time of pause for the moment, just while we try and figure out what's going on with the, the keyboards there. So yeah, take take a second, everyone. For those of you watching online, um, make All sure right, that you're it's... sending through your comments, your feedback, cheering everyone on. All right, it's his, it's back on. Let's let's get back into it. Ready? Go. Yeah. Back again. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. Okay. There is. This is the thing. It's like a live demo. There's always going to be a slight hiccup that comes up at some point. The key is just to ride with it and ride it out. So it's all good. But hopefully at this point, our uh, live audience, I do see a lot of drinks out there. The bartender looks like they've been hard at work. So uh, hopefully they don't mind as much right now. Hopefully not. And I do hope that there's a drink being saved for us, you guys. We've yes. not had a chance yet. So uh, I'll take a red wine when we're done. Great. How about you? Do we have cider? Uh, I would love a cider. OK. I Down. should uh, give a shout out, actually, whilst uh, they're still working in the final four and a half minutes. There's a huge team that goes into making this happen. Yes. Not just for these guys to be here, but also for all of the challenges that Absolutely. they've been working through. So shout out to them. Yes, it, it really does take a village. Thank you to our production partners at Trademark, everyone at the venue, my team back in the U.S. that's working on grading these uh, in between, our live stream crew. Really, it's, it's a big family. It's a big Appian community, if it you will. It is indeed. And let's not forget that these guys are competing for a huge prize, a thousand pounds prize yeah. for, as you say, like 20 minutes work overall. That's that's good going. Pretty good. What, what would you do with the thousand pounds? Definitely go somewhere hot. It has been too wet and too windy in the UK you know, this past week. I want to get on the beach. Can somewhere. I come with you? <laughs> we can have some fun. Let's, let's go back through another round as we're getting down to the yeah, wire Yeah, final here. three minutes and 40 seconds here. All now. right, so this one is looking pretty nice. So it looks like he's kind of going with this interface option um, and now just taking the time to set it up. Oh, I am seeing that color variable. So it looks like I'm seeing a selected answer. So maybe highlighting green if you get it right or yeah, red yeah, if you get it wrong. Yeah, that's looking good. We're starting to get some kind of user feedback or feedback to the user on that interface. Yeah, classic. All right, coming on over, it looks like Kavi Priya is working on um, working through some red box uh, errors here. But again, those errors make it really easy. Hey, check out line 15. 
uh, you may have an issue with your 4-H there. So troubleshooting is pretty much a breeze and it's development. Errors happen. It is one of the things I did notice throughout this round particularly, but also a lot of the early rounds. Everyone's kind of naturally gone into the expression edit, which is great. Appian makes it easy, but all of those component configs, everything they're doing pretty much can all be done in that component configuration. Yep. So for those in the audience that are fairly new to Appium, there is that sort of point and click type configuration that these guys could be doing. But I know I love getting into the Yeah, the it's, it is also a great place to start too. Not just that, but we also have interface patterns. We have our design.appium.com. We have a bunch of inspiration and give you the code so you can start from there and change it the way you want. I actually was curious if people were going to use some of the patterns for this and make their lives a little easier. Yeah, the patterns are not just the patterns. We've also had some huge leaps with things like the design library now. Yes. So when you go back to your different enterprises and businesses and you start to think about how can we expand the use of our applications? How can we make delivery faster? Those design library patterns where you can make any interface object reusable, yeah. is, it's a game changer. It really is. The design library is pretty cool. There's so much you can grab from the palette now. All right, under two minutes. We've got a buzzer. Jason has hit oh, his buzzer again. Looks like Jason Amazing. buzzed. Okay. So Hands we've got a minute and 39 seconds left for the other three participants. So He's going he's gonna, to uh, stand and maybe stretch out his back. He is actually quite tall and has been hunched over this It's desk, interesting. I see some green on Jason's interface, which suggests that he's got some color-based feedback on that interface. So yep. uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see what the experts out in the US make when they have a look through. We'll see. Here we have some card radio buttons looking pretty good there. Moving over. Okay, it looks like Kamapriya is still working on through some errors. I'm seeing here, I think uh, this is how she's working on saving those answer choices as people are selecting so then can check whether or not they're right or wrong. And uh, back over to Gokul, okay. He's working on configuring here as well. Looks like maybe uh, the target is missing somewhere. I know maybe developers could, out there. It could just be that simple target missing or even or a, a comma somewhere. But comma, he'll a parenthesis, he'll, find he'll that. get there. We're almost at 30 seconds. Oh my goodness, I cannot We're going to need Nathan. to start hearing some noise from the audience at this yeah. point because this is getting down to the last 30 seconds. Everyone back there. Bring the energy. Someone is winning a trip to Appian World. <laughs> so let's go. 20 seconds left. I mean, Jason's just chilling, hoping what he did is enough to take home the gold. Uh, he did compete in the first live build challenge and did not win. He's no so stranger to that pressure. This, he is uh, experienced, but doesn't have a gold. All right. I mean, we have five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Hands stop up. building. Hands up. Amazing work. That was tense and that exciting so at tense. the same time. Oh, I think uh, you all, you did a great job. We have a bit of a longer break now, so please sit down and relax while we work on scoring. Uh, so you can share out the portal to your friends and family. We'll have that up in yep. just a minute. So uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. There's uh, the QR code, or you can just type in this URL ae23lbc.appianportals.com slash crowdhub. It's a bit of a mouthful. Maybe pull out uh, and scan that QR code. Um, so they might not be wired up yet. Uh, my team is just going to make sure everything's saved, put it all together. Uh, but check back, keep refreshing. Anything else, Nathan, for no, now? No, I think we're good. Get voted when that gets up, and we'll see you all in 10 minutes or so. Yeah. All right.
Hello. All right, it's the end of the night, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get out of here. But there's one last thing we have to do, Nathan. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a longer pause than we wanted, but we had to be really, really sure of who was the winner of that last yeah. round because there was some stiff competition in there. There was. There was. Uh, we saw a lot of interesting things. I mean, I love seeing the different ways you can approach the same problem, all with the power of Appian. Do yeah, what you want. it's great to see. All right. I'm getting a little delusional. So first, another big round of applause for all the contestants. 16 competitors coming down to just one. So coming amazing work from everybody today. Well amazing done. work. And I know most of you are too afraid to get up here and do that. So a lot of kudos to those folks. All right. Drum roll, please. All right, Riley, you ready to go to it? I don't know. The winner of Appy in Europe. 2023 live build challenge is Jason Markov from Vision Point Systems. Woo! Now, oh, how sweet it is to make a comeback after losing in the first ever live build challenge, coming back to win it. Uh, do we have a do we have a mic? No, that's okay. Finally. Anyway, <laughs> finally, yeah. All right, let's. Uh, I don't know some champagne. Is that okay? Jason, how does it feel? Um, unexpected, but <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been great. Like the, everyone's been so strong. It's uh, like being around these guys; they're all so talented. Um, just, just being here is awesome. Like, thank you guys for organizing this. Um, great to be representing Appian. Great to be representing Vision Point Systems. Uh, glad to be here, and obviously glad to win. Also, so, yeah. Awesome! Great job, Jason. A little toast. All you've been drinking, and we're up here working. All right. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers. Happy in Europe.